This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concern about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot dot state dot florida dot us j e n n i f e r dot s m i t h number two at d o t dot s t a t e dot f l dot us you may also contact jacqueline paramore state title six coordinator by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4753, or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.florida.us. J A C Q U E L I N E dot P A R A M O R E at D O T dot S T A T E dot F L dot U S. This information is shown on a sign at the in person location on the project website and in the meeting notifications. This is the first of two public meetings for this corridor study. The purpose of this study is to first develop a shared vision for the area and key study corridors. Second, gather local input and understand what your experience along the corridor has been. Third, evaluate all the traffic data collected to identify key issues within the study area. And fourth, develop concepts and implementation strategies. The project team has been and will continue to work closely with all the key local stakeholders, which includes City of Maitland, Orange County, and the local transit agency links. We want to collect meaningful input and objectively assess the needs and opportunities based on data, information, and local experiences. Let's briefly discuss the project background. Maitland Area-Wide Study is a comprehensive transportation study evaluating the existing operations for all modes of travel, including vehicular, pedestrian, bicycle, transit, and rail in the city of Maitland. The study will also explore how we can improve the mobility and safety for all users. The study focuses on segments of three major corridors, which are 1.5 miles of segments on Orlando Avenue, which is also known as US 1792, from Maitland Avenue to Seminole County Line. About one mile segment on Maitland Boulevard from Lake Fate Drive to US 1792, and one mile segment on Maitland Avenue from US 1792 to Stone Hill Drive. US 1792 serves about 33,000 and 56,000 vehicles per day in different parts of the study segments. Maitland Boulevard serves around 60,000 vehicles per day on the study segments, and Maitland Avenue serves between 23,000 to 27,000 vehicles per day throughout the study limits. Minor collectors or local streets, such as Sibilia Avenue, Horatio Avenue, or Packwood Avenue, will also be evaluated as an integrated part to improve the area-wide roadway network mobility. This corridor study is being conducted to engage all users, which includes drivers, pedestrians, cyclists, and transit users. The department's commitment to safety for all users is key to a successful project, as the team evaluates the data collected, identifies the safety needs, and recommends improvements. Safety is everyone's responsibility, as we work towards the goal of zero fatalities. 
This planned study will recommend short-term improvement strategies to meet the user needs and address safety concerns. Maitland Area-Wide Study is a corridor planning study led by the Florida Department of Transportation, which identifies the best way to serve existing and future travel demand around downtown Maitland. The corridor planning study means the project is still early in the process of evaluating initial strategies and far away from engineering design or construction. The study team is currently defining the problems by analyzing the collected data as well as obtaining inputs from partner agencies, key stakeholders, and the general public. The next step is to outline the guiding principle with which the study team can assess solutions and start identifying alternatives to address the problems identified. Maitland Avenue and US 1792 have been part of the city's history since the very beginning. Maitland Boulevard was built in the 1970s. Since then, the roles of those three corridors have continued to evolve. Over the last 50 years, the core of commercial activities transitioned from Maitland Avenue to US 1792. Just in the last 10 years, many new developments or redevelopments were brought to the area, including a sun rail station, several office parks and retail, one public store and five residential redevelopments. 70% of those developments are on US 1792. The role of US 1792 have been reinforced again as a regional connector and city's backbone. There are many public and institutional uses within the study area, including schools and religious facilities. Maitland also has a thriving cultural community with several museums, historical residences, and public parks offering a diverse and inclusive setting. However, those civil, institutional, and recreational facilities are mostly along Maitland Avenue, highlighting its role as a historical center, a main street, a local connection between residents and culture, while U of 1792 functions as a regional arterial that's moving people and goods. The land use context largely impacts how people will travel in the area and their experience doing so. There are a variety of users ranging from car drivers, sun rail riders, people riding the local bus, pedestrians and bicyclists. Based on a trip characteristics analysis, the study team found that three quarters of the vehicle trips passed through the study area without stopping. The local residents were not the main sources of the traffic on the study corridors. Among the local trips, the average trip length is more than eight miles, which means they have origins or destinations outside of Maitland. The study area is conducive to long trips rather than supporting a compact, multimodal friendly environment that serves low speed and short trips. In terms of the non-motorized travel options, US 1792 and Maitland Avenue have almost full sidewalk coverage, but some segments need improvements as they have uneven surface or are parking lots without designated sidewalk space. Maitland Boulevard has sidewalks from Lake Fate Drive to Maitland Avenue and a pedestrian bridge over US 1792. There are no dedicated bike lanes on study segments. Cyclists have to ride on wide sidewalks with roadway adjacent, shared use path or shared lanes. There are no direct north-south bike routes connecting any of the community parks or sun rail station. Horatio Avenue has bike lanes on segments east of US 1792, but bicyclists are in mixed traffic. From 2016 to 2020, a total of 936 crashes have occurred on the study segments. The most prominent crash type is rear-ended crash, which is almost half of all crashes. Fortunately, the number of crashes in 2020 is about the same as in 2016. There's not a continuously increasing trend of the crashes observed over the past five years. There are eight pedestrian and bicycle crashes. One of them was a bicycle fatality in front of the Sunrail station. Specifically, 
the Maitland Boulevard off-ramp to US 1792 has witnessed 10 crashes since 2017. Based on the crash reports, the study team found that most were caused by nighttime driving, DUI, or underfoot surface with poor sight view. Additional short-term strategies are currently being evaluated by FDOT to improve the safety condition. The Sunrail station offers many opportunities for multimodal travel, but it was not well connected with other non-motorized travel components. The Sunrail station has one entrance on the west, accessible by the neighborhood by walking or biking. People can also enter the station without a vehicle using the other two sidewalk entrances along US 1792. There is a Lynx bus station for Route 102 across the street. However, the closest marked crossing opportunity in the south is 0.2 miles away, and the closest great separated crossing in the north is nearly a quarter mile away with a non-ADA compliant pedestrian bridge. There was a total of 68 pedestrian and cyclists trying to cross US 1792 in front of the Sunrail station with unmarked crossing based on a 48 hour video count. They were all coming from or going to board the Sunrail train and need to go to the businesses, residences across the street or catch the Lynx bus. This 14 month study kicked off in November 2021. Our next step will be to meet again with our project team, review feedback we received from this meeting, and develop future strategies. As you can see from the overall schedule, we plan to host two public meetings during the project duration. We are now in the first one and expect to host another public meeting in August 2022 to present the potential alternatives. We plan to finalize the quarter planning study at the end of 2022. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting records, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by March 16th, 14 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. To submit comments in person, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. If you're participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at cflroads.com slash project slash 9622001 cflroads dot com slash project slash 9622001 you may also contact the project manager directly by email at ennis.davis at dot.state.florida.us. E N N I S dot D A V I S at D O T dot S T A T E dot F L dot U S. Or by U.S. Mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720. You may also call the Product Manager at 386-943-5422 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by March 16, 2022. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at cflroads.com slash project slash 9622001 cflroads dot com slash project 
E C T slash nine six two two zero zero dash one. Have a good evening.